We're going to get started on the eights class. This class pulls everything we've built together into one, and it basically runs the game logic. So we already talked about the things we need to do, uh, but we'll go over that again really quickly. We need to create a deck, the players, the discard and draw piles. Um, and you'll notice that in the code that's here at the bottom of the screen, there's no actual deck object. Uh, so we'll deal with that in the constructor and uh, check whether the game is over, with the, which is, is done. A lot of these methods are going to be uh, given to us, and a lot of them will be complete. Uh, the draw pile is empty. Shuffle the discard pile. Move the cards into the draw pile, except for the top card, but that's the reshuffle method. Uh, with the draw card, reshuffle the discard pile if necessary. Uh, keep track of whose turn it is and switch. This is going to be a two-player game, so it's going to go from one to two to one to two, uh, alternating back and forth. Uh, display the state of the game and wait for the user before running the next turn. So we're going to basically print out what player one and two has in their hand and the uh, discard, the top card and the discard pile, I believe, as well. All right, so what they give us is public class eights. Uh, and five fields right here. So I've already put that into my code. Uh, what they don't give us is the constructor. So let's go ahead and build that. So it has to be public, same name as the class. Uh, ours, I don't think we need to put any send any parameters in. And we have to initialize everything that's up here. So we'll start with one. So we want to make a new play. One's a player, so we'll make a new player. We do need to send a string into player. Uh, that's the player constructor. We can go look somewhere up here. It takes a string, which is the name of the player. So we'll just call this player one. I'll do the same thing for two. So that takes care of one and two. Now we'll do the draw pile. So draw pile is a hand. So it's new hand. And it looks like hand uh, is requiring a string as an argument. So if we go to hand, here's the constructor. It takes a string, which is the label. So we got to give it a label. This is the draw pile. So I'll just call it draw. Uh, discard pile is really similar. It's also a hand, but we'll call it discard. All right, last is the scanner. Uh, you do need to import Java util scanner. And when you, if you just copied and pasted, you'll uh, need to drop that import line right there. All right, but we still have to initialize a scanner in equals, so new, the type is scanner. Just reading that right off of here. Uh, you can try to do a constructor with no arguments, but that won't work. Uh, and this scanner is gonna be for input from the keyboard. So that's system.in. All right, so that's basically the end of the constructor, except we, there's a few more things we're gonna have to do. Uh, so we'll come back and do those later. Uh, so I'm just going to copy all these methods and put them in. So this is the is done to determine if the uh, game needs to keep running or if it's over. And so right away, you can see one is a player object and there needs to be a get hand method, which there currently is not. So let's go ahead and write the get hand method. So here's player. So notice we have a hand variable, a hand field, but it's private. Um, and you can scroll down. There's no get hand here any uh, anywhere. So I'll just put this at the top. It's going to be public hand get hand takes no arguments and returns hand. All right, so now we have access to hand. That 
should take care of this error. Yep. Okay. And then again, the hand, so all of this that I've highlighted will turn into a hand and then it will call the is empty method. Um, and we do the same thing with uh, player two. All right. So that's the is done. Now the reshuffle, which is when the draw pile is empty. We move things from the draw pile to the discard, from the discard pile to the draw pile. All right, so this is the, saves the top card on the discard pile, uh, and it does actually remove it. Um, then it deals all the cards from the discard pile to the draw pile. And then we add the single previous card um, I think top card is probably a better name for this, but I'll just leave it as previous. Uh, and then we do shuffle the draw pile. That's important. Okay, draw card. So what's happening here? It says if the draw pile is empty, well, you can't draw a card. In that case, you reshuffle. And after the reshuffle, the draw pile should no longer be empty. Uh, then you return the draw pile uh, top card, which is what that pop card does. It removes the card and then returns it. All right, next player. This method just alternates from one player to the next. Uh, this will definitely need to be modified if you want to have more than two players playing the game. So all this does, it takes the current player. Uh, if current is one, it's going to return. Now it doesn't set current equal to two. It's going to return two. Uh, and then if current was not equal to one, it'll return one. So it'll return the player uh, that's not uh, the current player. All right, we're getting there. Display state. This will display everything that's relevant. So it'll, well, we already got a problem. It can't display players, uh, but good news is discard pile can uh, display. All right, so how do we fix? Let's see, oh, and it prints the draw pile. Now it doesn't actually print the full draw pile. It just prints out how many are left in there, the number of cards remaining. And then this right here is what waits for input. Uh, however, when we run it, there won't be any prompt to press enter which is what you need to do to uh, finish a line of input and move on. So I'm just gonna sout, press enter. Okay, let's fix these errors. There's a couple ways to fix it. One of them, we, we can go look at what a player is and then think about how we can handle display. So here's player player has a hand, so it'd be nice to display the hand the player has. Uh, we can get the hand, so we have access to the hand. Let's check out hand. Hand has its own display method. So let's think about how we can use the display method that's already here. There's two ways we can make this happen. We can do one dot get hand. Why is that not working? Get hand. That's strange. One is a player. Public hand, get hand. I spelled it right. Okay, well, apparently it's fixed now because I hit save. That's fantastic. All right, so one dot get hand turns into a hand, and then the hand has a display method. And we can do the same thing down here. So we can two dot get hand dot display. So that'll fix that error. Uh, there's a second way to fix this inside of player. I could write a display method. And here I'm just gonna call hand.display. So this would be another way to fix it. And all the dis 
display method does, it uses the hand field and calls the display on the hand field. And so now if you want, you could just do one dot display because now a player has a display method that we can call. All right, why does display work here? Well, because discard pile is a hand itself somewhere up here. Draw pile and discard pile are both hands, so they can just access the display method right here. Okay, so that's the display state, just displays player one, player two, displays the discard, tells us to press enter and waits. All right, now is it take turn. So let's drop that in. Oops, I don't know what I did. Take turn, okay. So what does take turn do? Uh, it considers the last card discarded, which would be the face up card in the game. The next card comes from the player play method, which sends in this, which is the current eights object uh, and the previous, which is the face up card. Uh, and then we add the card, which right here, add the next card, which is the one that player decided to play. Uh, then we print out the player name plays the card. All right, so there's no get name methods. So let's go ahead and fix that. So again, you could copy this. I could go and create method right here and then control B goes to it. So here's the get name that already put it in player. So what should the get name uh, it needs to return a string. And of course the string we want to return is name. And that's just the field right up here. So this method just allows us to access it. That should fix the errors here. Okay, so we're getting there. Now it's public void play game. I'm gonna actually put this right below the constructor. Okay, so what's happening in here? Uh, we have a while loop, so it's gonna keep looping around. So we have another player right here, but notice what this one is. It's called player, and it equals one. So one, and you can already see it highlighted, I know that this method is gonna run after the constructor because the constructor, whenever you build an object, the constructor has to be the first method called, right? When you build an object, so one is already gonna be initialized. So this object will not be null. It'll already be initialized by the constructor. Now here's the while not is done. That's that method that we looked at earlier. If both hands are empty, you're done. That's what is done uh, returns, true or false. So while we're not done, we're gonna display the state, which uh, displays all the different players and disc uh, draw pile, the discard pile. Then the current player takes the turn. And then right here, here's that next player method. It takes the current player and it sets the current player equal to whatever is returned. Again, that next player, we'll go down to that. So it basically returns the one that's not the current one. All right, so this just alternates player. Player is going to go from one to two to one to two uh, until we're done. All right, there is no display score right here. That's what it's telling us. So we need to write a display score. So we could go to the error, create method, and then control B to navigate to it, making it public. All right, display score. So what does display score do? Well, let's see. I don't know that it's here. We're gonna go to the top, the description. As soon as a player has no cards, the game ends. So that while loop will end. All other players score penalty points for their remaining cards. Eights are worth 20, face cards are worth 10. All others are worth their rank. All right, so we need to go through the player's hand so that sounds like a good 
uh, thing for a for loop. So start the loop out normal, i equals zero, i less than. All right, now we're gonna use the hand and hand has a size method. Increment i, so this will loop over all the cards. Now, hand dot, we have to be careful, get card. Now here's where the Java doc would have been nice so I can just read what get card does. Luckily I remember that it gets the value but doesn't actually remove it. Well, it gets the card, which will get the value from that. All right, so this is the current card right here. So what do we want to do with this card? Let's see the methods we have. We could do a get rank. Uh, I think I had a value somewhere, get value, but I don't see that here. So we'll just use the get rank for now. So int value equals. All right, so we're gonna go through, we're gonna look at every card and then get all of their values by the rank, which by the way is not exactly what we should be doing. If you look at this, eights are 20, face cards are 10, all the others are worth their rank. So good news is the others worth their rank is how basically it's gonna work for most cards, but all the face cards, uh, their rank is 10, 11, 12, or 13, I think, uh, and eights, will be worth eight, not 20, if I just leave the code the way it is here. So I'm not gonna adjust the points so that they're tallied correctly, you can do that. Uh, it's a couple if statements. Uh, but what we do need to do is add all these values together. So I'm gonna create an integer called total. Total equals total plus value. And then when we're done, not inside the loop, but when we're done, we're gonna sout the total. Uh, we'll co label it points. All right, so that should take care of the errors. Let's go and run it. All right, hey, it didn't loop forever, but what do we see? Absolutely nothing. All right, fantastic. What in the world is happening? Remember what method runs first, public static void main runs. I did comment all my test code out. Uh, so there's nothing in here. I'm just gonna put, hmm. All right, so there we go. You can see it's printing out, hmm. So what's going on? We got no code in here to do anything with eights. So what do I need to do? I need to create the eights object calling the constructor and then call the play game method. And we're gonna do it in two lines. So we have eights, uh-oh, eights, uh, Eights equals new. There were no arguments in the constructor, so it's empty parentheses. All right, there's a lot of methods in eights that probably should be private, and you can see all the ones we wrote are here in bold. All the public ones we wrote are here in bold. Uh, the one we want is play game, but for example, I'm not sure that reshuffle should be public. I'm not sure that take turn should be public. We call all those from inside of play game. So this play game method is the one that actually uh, has the while loop and runs. So let's go and hit play. All right, look at that. Point zero, point zero. What in the world happened? Well, where would it display that? That comes from the display score down here. So we didn't actually, at least it doesn't seem like we actually looped in here. So let's go and I'm gonna just put a turn number equals zero. I'm gonna sout turn plus, I'm gonna do some fanciness right here. 
I'm gonna print turn number, but I'm also gonna increment it in the same line. So it'll print out turn number and then increment it. And if you're wondering why did I put parentheses, extra parentheses here, uh, I just wanna make sure it doesn't concatenate before uh, it applies this increment right here. So I'm just enforcing the order of operations. All right, let's run it now. Look at that, it's not even running one turn. Why is that? Well, let's think about is done. That's gonna stop running when both players have zero cards. Let's look at those players. We built the players. Did we ever give them cards? Remember a new player right here. We can go and look at player. Here is somewhere the constructor. So it did make a hand. However, it didn't fill the hand up with cards. We need to do that. So how do we do that? There's two places that make sense to do it. One of them is right here at the top of play game before we get into the while loop. The other place that makes sense to do is in the constructor right here. Where's the best place to put it? I don't know that there necessarily is a best place to put it. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna put it in the constructor, then we're going to uh, make our own method out of it. All right, so what do I need? I need some cards. Yes, we do have lots of hands, but remember hands don't initially get any cards in them. There is one object that does get filled with cards when you build it. That's the deck. Remember the deck constructor adds 52 cards. So we're gonna need a deck. So I build a new deck. Uh oh. Why is this? We need a label. Okay. So we'll just call it deck. All right. So we got the deck. Uh, now we need to start moving cards from the deck to the players and then into the discard pile and the. Uh, what's the other one? Discard. The draw pile. All right. So how do we do that? Well. I think it's deck dot deal. And here you can see I changed the variable, the parameter name to destination. And uh, you can read the Java doc right there because I knew that future Chris was going to be confused if I, I wasn't much more specific about which direction the cards are going. So the destination is the first parameter and the number of cards is the second. So let's do this. All right, I think I'm gonna go to player one first and I'm gonna deal player one five cards. All right, but we have a problem here. Player cannot be converted to card collection. So I wanna deal the player five cards, but deal the deal method only works with card collection. So there is a card collection in here. Remember your get hand returns a hand and you might be thinking, well, hand's not a card collection. However, a hand is a card collection because everything in hand, uh, or everything in card collection is also in hand because hand extends card collection, so it inherits everything from card collection. All right, so this one dot get hand is a card collection and it's gonna get five cards. So that takes care of one. Now we're gonna take care of two. Now we can duplicate this again. I want to deal one card to the discard pile, but not five, one. Uh, now I want to deal the rest to the draw pile. So how many is the rest? Five and five and one is all 11. 52 minus 11 is a lot, 43. Uh, however, there's a nice method for this. We wrote the deal all method, which just deals to all the remaining cards. Okay, now everybody has cards. Both one has cards, two has cards, the discard pile has one card, and the draw pile has all the remaining cards. So deck should have no cards now. Because of where I declared deck right here, 
deck will no longer exist. I declared it here, so deck will no longer exist as soon as I leave this method. Deck is not a field, so deck will not continue to exist. I'm okay with that because uh, we can build a new deck if we need to very easily. There isn't anything special about deck once we've dealt all the cards. Okay, so this will fill up everything. It might be good to write a method that initializes a new game. And so we'll take all this code, drop it into new game, and then call new game. All right, this has the, if I could spell G-A-M-E. This has the advantage if I wanna make a, if I wanna run a second game, I don't necessarily need to rebuild everything. Um, of course, I do need to clear out uh, anything in the old hand and old discard pile and draw pile. Uh, so uh, maybe I'll put that code in here. So in case the hand was not empty, Oh, we didn't write a clear or get rid of all cards. We sure didn't. Okay, so we'd have to write a clear method and I would probably put that in card collection. We're in here. Doesn't really matter where we put it. We'll drop it right below two string. All right, so this should get rid of all oh, public void. This needs to get rid of all the cards. And I think cards was the name of the array list. And if you look clear, we're gonna read the Java doc, removes all the elements from the list, the list will be empty. All right, so be very careful when you call this because those cards are gonna literally disappear. Uh, they're not gonna go somewhere else. They're gonna cease to exist. All right, now we can go one.gethand.clear dot clear do that to one do that to two uh, we're going to do it to draw pile and discard pile but remember draw pile is a card collection so draw pile you can directly call clear and same thing with the discard pile all right when you first run it, all these are already empty, so clear won't do anything. Uh, but if you want to run a second game or a second round, this will get rid of all the cards, create a brand new deck, and then deal. There's still one logical issue with this. Uh, here's why I wanted to put the press enter in. So you can see one and two. Here's the discard, the top discard pile, uh, top card in the discard pile is three, right there. Uh, we're gonna press enter. So it doesn't say whose turn it is, but it does say one player one plays the king because the king matched the three. Press enter again, should be player two plays the eight of spades. So there's the eight of spades, matches the three of spades. So that's a legal play. And you can see the discard got that three of spades. Uh, so it'll be player one's turn next. Look at that, queen of spades. You should start to be suspicious. Why are there so many spades? Let's think about this. We made a new deck somewhere. Made a new deck and we just started dealing. Remember deal, I believe takes it off the, I don't know if it's the top or the bottom, but it takes off one of the ends of the deck. It doesn't deal randomly. So what we really need to do deck.shuffle. Otherwise, it's not a coincidence that we started with king, queen, jack, 10, nine of spades, eight, seven, six, five, four of spades. Not a coincidence. So now we'll hit stop, run again. Here we go. All right, so now we do have shuffled cards here, discard, so we're trying to play on a four of diamonds and it is, I think player one goes first. So player one can play that diamond Place queen of diamonds, you see queen of diamonds there. All right, so it should be player two's turn. 
I don't think they can play the five of spades. So player two had to draw a card, which we didn't write any code that printed out what they drew. Uh, we could definitely write that in there. So I'm assuming they drew the queen of hearts and you see the queen of hearts going right there. All right, we'll let this play out a little more. So it's player one's turn. They have a two of hearts, so they should be able to just drop the two of hearts on top. Now it's player two's turn, five of spades. They're out of luck. They're gonna have to draw. Uh, okay, okay, there we go. Player two draws the jack of hearts and plays the jack of hearts. I must've missed the draw earlier, the draw print statement. All right, and we can just keep going, going, going. And eventually somebody runs out of cards. Uh, you could get unlucky and this game can go for a very long time. It's like somebody's about to win. I spoke too soon. There we go. All right, so that is Crazy Eights.